Hello, hello everybody. It is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool. And tonight we're talking all about student portfolios, what to put in them, how to organize them, just all the things, student portfolios. Last week we talked about assessments or in the last video. So if you need to watch that, go back and watch that. The links for that will be where the links are. And yeah, so again, today we we're talking all about portfolios. Um, there's links to all the things. There's links to my blog, which shows you this um, student portfolios in more detail. There's also links to my store, so you can buy a lot of the printables that I have for you if you want. And then, yeah, so in the comments, I want you to tell me what is your trick to doing student portfolios in your classroom? How do you keep it organized? What's like a hack that you do that everyone needs to know? So. Tell us all the things in the comments so we can learn from each other too. All right, so student portfolios, they can be a headache, right? I was always required to do them in my district. And then when I taught in my half day program, I chose to do them because I loved them so much. And you could just see students growth and the families love them so much as well. Um, so yeah, so I had to do them and then I did them by choice. So yes, I'm crazy. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna tell you all the tricks. So my first trick is with student portfolios is try to do the things that you're already doing. Try and make it in a paper form so you can put it in their portfolios. Okay. And I'm going to tell you all the tricks to, on how to do that in a minute. Cause we don't want to give it, we want, we want them to have as the least amount of work as, as possible. Right? So also that keeping them organized can be a chore and it can be hard because there's just, there's so much stuff in our classrooms. Right? So I make this crate when I taught full day and I had 18 kids, I had like a larger milk crate, but this one worked when I had um, eight or nine kiddos in my half day class. Um, this label is in my crate labels um, uh, unit in my TPT, in my store. Um, so let me tell you about the crate because this is a game changer, you guys. So the first file, it says need to document. Okay, so let's say I did a whole bunch of assessments and I haven't been able to um, document each student's um, level yet in my data book. Um, maybe I haven't had time to look at them or reflect about them and again, write them down in my data book. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put them, we don't wanna have piles in our classroom, so I'm gonna put them in this, this need to document file so that way, one, I know where they are and two, it doesn't create more piles in my classroom. And then the next one is to be filed. Okay, so let's say I get these out and I have 10 minutes. I'm gonna get okay, this really quick. So I'm gonna go through these. I'm gonna turn to my student skill page and I'm gonna write down what letters that student knows and then I'm gonna go through the whole stack. And then, since these are all documented and I know where all my students are, I'm going to put these in the to be filed. Okay, now sometimes there's art projects in here. It doesn't always have to be very like assessment-y. Um, it can be like journals, like maybe um, it's, the, it's the end of the month and I usually keep one journal from each student in their portfolio. So maybe I'll, instead of sending these home right away, I'm gonna take all of the journals and maybe it's like this thick, right? Cause there's, you know, eight, 10 of them, however many students you have. I'm gonna put them in this need to be documented file. So that way when I have 10 minutes, I can, pull these out, get one from each student, and then I can send these home, and then I can write down, um, note where they are um, in my data binder, right? I would turn to my, my literacy section, and I would turn to the page that says um, stages of writing, and I would really quick jot down where every student is, okay? And then I would put those in the to be file, right? Because behind that, I have all my students have their own folders, okay? Because, in the classroom, you have what, 10 minutes here, five minutes there, maybe 20 minutes if we're lucky there, or maybe it's nap time, everybody's sleeping magically, and you have 10 minutes, or maybe another teacher in your classroom has 10 minutes. What you're gonna do is grab grab some out of this to be filed section and start filing them. That way, if you only can do seven pieces of um, work samples and file them, that, that's seven you don't have to do later, right? So you can just do a couple here and there, Every, you know, all those five minutes of time where you're filing here, some here and some there, those big, those will add up to be a lot of stuff filed. And then once their files get full, I usually transfer um, into their portfolios. So, but this has been huge, you guys. This is like the to be filed and the need to be documented. That's huge because again, 
if you teach full day or you have a nap time or, you know, you have a planning period and maybe you're, you're doing your assessments for like 10 minutes and a parent calls or admin walks in and you have to stop, it's no big deal because you can just put the ones you haven't, fi haven't filed yet, put it back in the to be filed and you can go about your day and it's still all organized in the crate. Like it's not another pile you have to put away. You can literally just take this. Put this back on the shelf and you're you're good to go. Okay, so that was that was a game changer for me. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go through a portfolio from my classroom so you can kind of see what's it, what I put in it, and all the things. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Before you put everything in this crate whole punch everything at once. So if it's especially because we do a lot of gluing and pasting and a lot of things have like, they're not like the normal papers that like, you know, high school teachers have. So sometimes they're tricky to whole punch. So whole punch them before you put them in the needs to be documented or needs to be filed page because that way when you take like, when you take Brindley's folder to put it in here, everything is whole punched and you will have done it in chunks and you won't have to be doing Friendly's folder and literally hole punching each individual page. It is a pain in the butt. So, or you can use a little hole punch sometimes. Maybe, you know, things are oddly shaped. Maybe you have a paper plate collage and you just want to put one hole punch in the on each paper plate and put it in here. So, hole punch before you file because it will save you time. Okay? So, like I said, this is my own kiddos. He was in my class. So, I'm gonna go through the whole thing and tell you all about it. So, I always use dividers in my portfolios and these are the ones I use. And again, these are in my portfolio um, unit in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. So I, I and I break it up into big, bigger chunks. So I do literacy, math, fine motor, just for fun. And then I do art. Wait, hold on, did I miss one? Oh, science, sorry. Let's try that one more thing. So I do, so in all my dividers, so I use dividers, right? And I do it in the big chunk. So I have literacy, and then math, fine motor, or motor, because I put gross motor in here too, science, just for fun. That's where I put all the pictures. And then art to the back, because usually those are the, the really crazy shaped things. So, and I put one in each. I do it on different colors, so that way, you know, I print them all, and then I, if I have extras, I just put them in my file, and I am ready to go. So, and I just put them in a page protector. So, like here is the literacy section. Now, I don't do tabs or anything fancy. You can if you want. You can also get these, like, super detailed and do, like, self-portraits. Like, every single thing has a section, but I don't just because that way if we do something and it doesn't fit it always fits in because it's just the the, um, the areas of development, right? Or the um, the learning strands or learning goals. So I do some big general ones. So, oops. Oh, and then in the front, this is the memory book that we do at the end of the year. And then that's usually their last journal that goes home that last month of school. So I just usually put those two in the front and those are ready to go. Now, I just use cheap binders. I usually buy them at like Walmart or something um, at the beginning of the school year. So you can do that too if you want, or hopefully your school will um, purchase them for you. So again, all the things. This is why you want a whole punch because it's just all, all crazy, right? And then, so for literacy, what I have in here is, these are the identifies letters pages that I, I do one-on-one -on -one with students. So I, I do those assessments individually. And what you will, oh, hold on. So I have August and I do, I try and do it each quarter. So we have August and then each quarter. So that way, hopefully you can see student growth and eventually, hopefully they know almost all their letters, right? And then he was a pre-K kiddo this year. So I also have a sound assessment in here as well. And then I have a whole bunch of writing samples. And again, I'm doing, I'm gonna put things in here that I'm already doing. So I do a lot of invitations to write in the morning. And what those look like are, like I have this out. So 
let's say we're doing a farm theme, I will put out farm themed writing paper, some stickers, maybe some cut up letters, okay? And maybe some big paper or maybe like a letter or something like that. And then I'll put these all out on the table. I'll put one piece of paper at each chair and then students come in and they get to write. Now, are they gonna be drawing? Absolutely, because drawing is a form of communication too. So they just write. Okay, so this is one from back to school because they're school kids. And then here's another one, it looks like fall. And I try and write down what they, they tell me their words mean. And again, this is something I already have in my lesson plans. This is a shopping list we did during small group when we were doing grocery store and pretend. Here's another one, looks like he did too. Or this one's from when we had a pet store and pretend. So again, take all those um, writing samples that you do from Dramatic Play, put those in your portfolio. And then again, I keep one journal, and these are writing journals, not fine motor journals from every month. So we have like January and then February, all the way till the end of school. And then we did a research paper on dinosaurs. And then oh, another journal, those were in order. And then I have all of the kind of like writing letters in here. So, or like lettery, lettery, letter activities, sorry. So we have a letter collage. We have a letter, a name dotted. We have um, letter trains. Now I know some of you guys put these in your fine motor journals. Um, so you'll just put their fine motor journal in, and like you can either put it like bind it in the front and put it in the front of their portfolio or just put it in like the pocket. And then here is a name tissue collage. Here's a letter sort. Here are just some letter, some name activities we did. And then here is a some a name craftivity that we did. So those are some things that I put in my writing center. Now I um, and I put the writing more of the writing letters in the fine motor section, which I'll show you that in just a minute. So again, I use, I take, we do writing journals um, the second half of the year. So I take one of those out every month and I'll put those in. And again, the, these are the writing journals, not fine motor journals, because each page looks like this. They get to draw and write at the bottom and they get to do it on whatever topic they want. Um, I have a whole blog post and YouTube video on writing journals if you want to know more about that. Hold on. And then again, you, we're, I'm going to put things in there that we're already doing. So any kind of name activity that we're doing, those are the things I'm going to put in there. Anything with their name or letters. Here are just some more like an invitation to write. And again, these scribbles are just as important as the random letters because they have to do this before they can do the random letters, which eventually leads to writing with um, some sounds and things like that. And then if they make any cards, like this is like a happy Halloween card, you could put that in their journal. And again, some of this will go home. So keep what you can for their journals. And again, just more invitations to write. Um, here is a like letter magazine collage and just another letter collage. So I put all of that in the literacy section. Okay, let me, this, I have, I have two portfolios here. So I'm going to look through this one. And also if you have any like writing things that have to do with the holiday, this was, he wrote what he was thankful for. And again, these scribbles are just as important as those random letters because they have to scribble before um, they can write. So in this one, we have a letter to Santa. Again, name art, invitations to write. We have a dinosaur research, more letter collages. And again, you'll see this is a different year. I had him for two years. This was, we wrote letters to the farmer, like based on the Click Clack Blue Book and their journals. So. My, my, my portfolios look very similar from year to year, but the, the contents inside vary a little bit. Um, so let's keep going to math. So for math, a lot of the activities we do are playing games, right? So what I do is I, when they're playing a game, I grab my assessment data book. I would turn, turn to math. And then as they are playing the game, hold on one second. So 
So as they play their game, I'm just going to show Jude's, for example. So let's say we're playing this construction make 10 game. So I'm going to say, oh, how many do you have? And maybe he tells me and he'll, maybe he counts. He can only have, he only has one, one correspondence to five. So I would write that down. Now I do each semester in a different color. So if it's springtime, I'm an, and he, maybe he wrote counts to 16 now, or maybe he wrote counts to 17. So I'm going to a different color marker. And again, I use a different color for each quarter and I would write it down. Or if it were still in that same assessment period, I would cross out the 15 and put 16. Okay. And then you can also, again, we're playing games. We're asking him, we're asking them to count. Um, so write it down in your data book. And then what I do is I take a picture of them playing that game. He's making the best face for me in this one. And then I write on the rubric, the math, um, where he's at for the different math things. So we have rote counts, and then we have counts with one-to-one -one correspondence, and then can he demonstrate that the last number he counted means how many are in the set? And so, yes. And again, I put a picture here because we learn through play in my classroom, and I'm sure you do in your classroom. So anytime you do a rubric, I like to include a photo of a game we played, so that way families know, oh, that's where she got that information from, and it also shows them, oh my gosh, I'm falling out. So clearly I should um, use a bigger binder. I, I think these are one and a half inch. I would do um, two inches. Because clearly I'm falling apart. Okay, here's another rubric we have. Um, they're just playing accounting too. Again, they're already playing this in my classroom. I'm gonna go observe, over there, observe them, listen to them play and count. Or maybe I'm gonna ask them to count. He now counts with one-to-one -one correspondence up to 20. And again, I'm gonna include that picture. And then here's another one. We're doing a um, math game where they put that many beads on the pirate flag, and he now has one-to-one -one correspondence up to 25. And again, I'm including that picture. Again, these are the things we're already doing, so just take a photo of it and fill out a rubric to put it in their portfolio. And then, well, this stuff is all falling out in the back. And then I have identifies numbers, and this is an assessment. I do one-on-one, -on -one, and again, I do one each quarter. So, the first quarter, he knew almost all of his numbers, so then I, I um, assessed him on numbers to 20. And then if they make a guess, I also put that down there. Oh, X means they, they knew the number, by the way. <laughs> and then I also do it with shapes. And then I also ask if they tell me a comment or a characteristic of the shape, I write that down on the corner. Again, all these rubrics are in my um, um, portfolio pack, an assessment pack. And again, I do that each quarter. And then I put all the other math things we do. So here is a math fingerprint graph that we did. This is a, a freebie on my blog. Here is a shape, um, a pizza shape craftivity we did. Here are some little triangle books or little shape books they did. Here is a shape collage. Here is um, some sorting. And again, I like to use these paper shapes my trick is with sorting, and I'll show you on this one. Again, I'm having them sort different ways. So what I do for this activity is I get my assessment book out, or you can just write look, in the corner, I have sorts by, and you can write your notes right there. And then I like to use these foam shapes. You can use ones with stickers or without, and I have them sort different ways. And the last time they sort, I ask them to stick them on in that section. So it's a hands-on activity. They just stick the last way they sorted on to the mat. And then I write in the corner if they sorted by color, shape, size, or another way. And again, you can do it each quarter. And then, oops, sorry guys. And you can also use paper shapes if you don't have the, um, the foam shapes. And I just cut some freehanded. And then I gave them four different colors because there's four boxes here. So again, a hands-on activity, I just had him glue it down. And then we made some pattern snakes. We made some pattern eggs. Oh, balloon, it's a balloon. <laughs> we did some pattern stamping um, with marshmallows. We'd made caterpillar patterns with dot markers. We made a graph. We did a tally graph, or he did one. And then we did some measuring. Woo, that flew out. <laughs> so they measured the tape and counted how many, or with Unifix Youth, how long it was. And then he made a map. 
it looks like. Yep. And then that's that section. Let me see if there's anything else we did this year. So we have, he did, oops, let me go to that. So we did the sorting and then we actually did a, a shape sort. So I have these, this is from my 2D shape unit. We sorted rectangle, not a rectangle, square, not a square. We have a shape collage. You can tell this was his three-year-old year. <laughs> and we made a map. It's in white crayon, you can barely see it. And he has a map of his farm. We did some patterns. We did, pat he did um, some little, maybe a snake, it has a little face on it. Or maybe, um, maybe it's a caterpillar, I can't remember. <laughs> And then we did some peep patterns. So those marshmallow peeps, we did put dip those in paint and he made that pattern. We did another graph again. I love these shapes. <laughs> he did it by, by, um, by shape. And then another um, shape book. Also, I love using paper shapes like these. Because you can really make a lot of paper shape activities, it makes it a little bit more hands-on if you need, um, if you need a portfolio sample. Like I have, I have a bunch of them. Like I have a triangle one, I have like flowers. Um, you can also use like the little ones too, but I find that the bigger ones, these are just Fiskars brand. I think they're from like Michael's. Um, and I have like all your basic shapes, right? Like your circle and your square. But you can put these out or you can have some already made and then put these out that way if they want one of another color, you run out of a certain color and then they can make um, patterns or they can count um, with the paper shapes. Cause it, it, again, it's one activity. It just makes it a little bit more um, hands on. Okay. All right, so now we are to fine motor. So for fine, oh, that one fell out. For fine motor, again, there's my little divider. Oh, that one, I didn't finish. Here we go. Let me get you a better example. Hold on. For some reason, I didn't put his other um, pencil grasp in here. So you can see he's um, signing in because we sign in every morning in my classroom. I have a whole um, video on that, which I'll put I'll put the link to that video in the comments, or where the links are. And then I write which grass it is, fisted, inconsistent, or a mature tripod. And then I put a photo, because at parent-teacher conferences, I can show the family that photo. And again, I want one in where he started in August. And then I either do one like in December, or at like fall conferences, if they've um, progressed a lot. Or you can always put one at the end of the year, so you can show growth. But it says place photo here. I don't know if it fell out or what. And then for the name sample, whoop, which is the next page. So there he is writing his name and then he, um, all year long. And then I'll show you another one. Here he is when he was three. And again, I just kept one every month, every other month. And in my classroom, we sign in every morning. So all I would do, and I um, I would just keep these for a week, all the sign-in forms for a week. I would put them in this to-be-documented to form or file, and then I would look through them, and I would cut them out, and I would mark it in my assessment note or my data book where they were, and then I would cut one out and put it for their portfolio. So again, it's something we're already doing. My students already sign in every morning, and... It's based, it's on their individual, um, where they are individually. So like Charlie's writing, his name is in lowercase. Tatum's doing uppercase. Um, so yeah, and then I just keep them. Because again, we're already doing it. So why would I give myself more work, <laughs> right? So again, use, if they sign in every morning, then you keep that and use that. Maybe you want them to sign in, you know, maybe, I don't know, for... Maybe you do a sign in at a different time of the day or maybe by the computer or something like that. Keep that and you can use that for your, your name samples. And if you're not doing it, sign in in the morning, you should because it's awesome. You can see so much growth. And then I also do one self-portrait every month. 
Okay. So we have August because it's great because it's you get to see so many things. You can see how they're drawing. You can get um, an assessment of their name if you don't want to do a sign-in. You can also take a picture of them drawing this for their pencil grasp. And then again, put that photo on the rubric and then that way that's in there. And so we have one for every month. I'm not going to look right in our last name now. Right, and then we have goes all the way till the end of the year. And look, we're writing our name in lowercase. So you can see all the progression. So we have a whole bunch of detail of a pe person's a lot smaller, and we're writing our name in lowercase. So lots and lots of growth there. But again, if you don't do sign in, you can um, use this as your name sample, as this as your self portrait. And then again, take a picture of them drawing or writing this, either part, and then put that on the rubric for their pencil graph. Now, I like to have my students draw shapes, write uppercase, write lowercase, and write numbers each quarter. And what I do is we already read so many amazing alphabet and counting books. So what I will do is I will, I have, I have big clipboards or regular size clipboards by my circle area. And a lot of times my students will draw and write as I read or maybe after I read um, during circle. So they grab a clipboard and they grab a marker, which I have in little buckets down by my circle area. So, and once they do it a couple times, it's again, a routine. They grab a piece of paper, they grab their clipboard and they go sit back down in their circle area. And maybe we're gonna read an ABC book. There's ABC books for almost every theme. Okay, you're gonna read the ABC book. And then I usually write it, like if I read, U is for underground and I write a U, maybe we're writing uppercase or lowercase, write the letter. I write the letter on the dry erase board and then they write it on their paper. And again, we do it with letters. There's a ton of great shape books. This is just one, again, I grabbed farm, the farm theme out to give some examples. And this one is counting from the garden. So he picks different um, things from the garden and he counts them. So I love this book, From the Garden. It's a great book. If you need more alphabet and number books, those I have um, those book lists on my blog for you too. So again, you are reading these books these amazing books during circle. So what are you gonna do? Give them a clipboard and a piece of paper and have them draw their shapes. And again, I try and do one a quarter so, though, so that way we can see growth. So those are those shapes. And then I have numbers. This, my little guy, he loves yellow. Can you tell? <laughs> and then we have rights. Oh, that's still numbers. And then we have uppercase letters. And again, we have some each quarter. And then I have lowercase too. Okay, so that's writing letters and numbers and shapes. Again, you guys are reading these awesome books, so give them a clipboard and let them write and draw during circle time. Students, little guy, little learners think clipboards are so cool. One, they're like this really fun big thing they get to write on. Two, they get to write or draw as you're reading, so they get to um, be active part participants in the circle time too, so that's really fun. So cutting. Now this is the one assessment that my students might say it's boring, but that's okay because I wanna see them cut the same thing each quarter so I can see their growth. Now, do we do other cutting things? Absolutely. But for this one, this is the assessment I do every quarter. Cause again, we need to be cutting the same thing so we can see that growth, right? So I give them, so I have all of this usually prepped. And copied in my crate. This holds all my assessment printables. So they get this piece of paper. I can cut lines. Or I'm sorry. I have this piece of paper. I can cut lines. And then what they do is I say, okay, pick a piece of color or a color lines and they cut it out. And then all I do is I have all of these by me. So I have these and I write, I write everybody's name that's in my small group at the top. Like this is Jackie. When Jackie is done cutting her shapes, or her lines, or maybe we're doing lines and shapes depending on um, how frustrated they are with cutting. And again, these are all, she cut them. Not the best, but hey, you know what? We're working on it. We got, we got three cut out. So she gives me these. I put these in a stack. And then as each student's done, I put them in a snack. And then I I usually put these in like a baggie and then I'll put them in the to be filed section because 
what I will do is during my plan time, I will glue these on just however. I'll kind of put them together like a puzzle. So I'll try and like figure out how they go. Like, so they look like this. So it's kind of like a puzzle. And there might be some on the back and that's okay. But I don't have them glue them on because they might glue it on where you can't see the lines. And look, oh, we have stickers. If, you, if they're ever bored doing something like this, say once you cut out the lines, they can add stickers or you can add stickers and then they can cut it out, whatever they wanna do to make it more um, engaging. And then we do the same thing for shapes. And that one was a square, so I drew a square because you couldn't tell what shape it was and that's okay. And here we are cutting our shapes. And again, sometimes you gotta give them stickers to make it a little bit more fun. Now, those are the assessments I use, the shape assessments, or the cutting shapes and cutting line assessments. Now, all the other fun cutting activities we do, I put them in their portfolio. So here we cut a Christmas list. We did, oh, that's something else, hold on. Let me show you some of the other things you can put in here. And again, anything you guys are doing for cutting, put it in their, keep it and put it in their portfolio. So we did, you know, this is tried and true, right? When you're doing a healthy food theme, cut out pictures of food and put paste on a paper plate. We did, um, we did a cutting collage and then they glued on shapes for Halloween, Christmas list. These are some car magazines I found at the grocery store. So we cut those out for a transportation theme. And then, hold on. Here's some other um, things that you could do for cutting. So if you do any of the craftivities in my math and literacy centers, that's why theirs are, don't have that much cutting because I, I pulled them out for something else. So take this and what you're gonna do is you're gonna put it in a page protector and then just slide it in. Any, they cut this out by themselves, that would be a great cutting assessment. A lot of the craftivities, you could put these in their portfolio for cutting. Again, all the little cutting paper plates, but any cutting activity you're doing, any kind of cutting collage or tearing collage or sticker collage, I put those all in the fine motor section. So I would take a page protector and, or again, you can see this one was in there and I will hole punch it and I would just slide it in their port, um, their portfolio. And if they do any other um, pictures, Maybe you're drawing something for something else. Put any, again, any drawing, put that in there as well. All right. Oh, and then if you want to, you can put your directed drawings. Oh my gosh, this pink one though, you guys. <laughs> any directed drawings, you can put these in their fine motor section too, or you can put them in art. It really depends on, again, where you want to put them. Oh, and I forgot to tell you something else too about math. So I'll go back to that in just a second. Now I know there's a lot of things we do fine motor wise that that a lot of times we um it's just through play, right? Like maybe we're doing a play-doh tray, or maybe we're lacing lacing beads. So what you're gonna do is you're going to I usually take a picture and then you can do it. I usually write it up for the whole class and then I put each student on here. So it says activity, it says fall Play-Doh. And then for skills, it says strengthening fine motor muscles and then hand-eye coordination. So, and then I have a picture of that kiddo doing Play-Doh. Here's another example. So we are lacing beads or chains and I put the skills or objectives and I just put the photo here. Now. My trick in the cutting, the, the printing these photos, so when you're on your computer, click the photos you want to print, select nine to a page, and they'll print in this little perfect little rectangle. And oh, you might have to click the um, fit to image, like you select nine, <laughs> select the photos, and then pick nine to a page, and then there's a little box, you may have to check like click to fit or something like that, so that way the, it fits perfectly in your little, in the little pocket. But again, here's another Play-Doh tray we're doing, spring Play-Doh tray. And again, I do this for the whole class. And then I just put the kids, um, I print the pictures and put those on there. Okay. So, because we have, we do so much learning through play, I have things falling out on me. <laughs> we want to make sure families 
um, see that, right? And for the cutting, if they're cutting straight through, that's okay. You're just going to say, you know what? They're going to make huge growth this year. And at the end of the year, you'll be so excited because before they couldn't even attempt to cut lines and now they are cutting. Or maybe they just do fringe down the side. That's okay. Cut that and glue that in their portfolio. Again, we want to we want to take them right wherever they are. We want to take them from that little skill that they're at and we want to develop it more and more and more. So show where they're at and it's not like it's a bad thing where they are or maybe they haven't grown very much because kids are sponges, right? Maybe they grow a ton in literacy, but maybe they haven't grown a lot in maybe like um, math. And then maybe all of a sudden they grow a ton in math, but literacy, maybe they've kind of slowed down over there, right? Their brain can't learn everything all at the same time. So that's a great way to show it in their portfolio. All right, now for... Oh, and then also for the fine motor section, if you do my letter books, literally take these, put them in. Oops, here we go. Here's my page protector. Take these, put them in a page protector, and then put them in their portfolios. Um, these I have in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. Um, we just do a letter a day. I can actually do a video on these. I haven't yet, so. I will add that to my to-do list. Basically, we do one letter a day and we work on drawing it. And then this is his three-year-old one. When I have my my three-year-old do just the uppercase and then my pre-K friends, two of the letters are uppercase and two of the letters are lowercase for each other. So, just so you know. <laughs> so, let's move on to science. So, science is another tricky... Oh, actually, not science. Gross motor. <laughs> so... It's kind of hard to put how a student jumps in a portfolio. So what I do is I have my gross motor rubric. Okay, and I put this in my portfolio. Now, if we do an obstacle course, you can put that picture on the back. Or maybe just a picture of them on the playground doing a skill or something. Or maybe doing a gross motor activity. But again, fill out a rubric and then put a picture on the back. All right, so now science. So science, again, is a tricky one because science is so hands-on. So I'm going to show you some ideas you can do to make it, to put it in their portfolio. So we made skeletons, making skeletons and talking about the parts and bones of our body. That is science. So I put this skeleton portrait in here. Anytime they observe, like ladybugs, butterflies, fish, chicks, whatever, whatever it is, anytime they do a um, discovery page, Take that and put it in their portfolio. Maybe you do it for a small group. Maybe they did it during center time. Take that and put that in. This was a fish observation place. Paige says, I love my fish <laughs> at the bottom. Um, let me show you some out of here. Where are they? Here is another one. Oh gosh, I have stuff falling out everywhere. We went on a leaf walk in the fall. I think a lot of us do, right? And I they taped their leaf in in their journal and then they drew their leaf you can very much tell he's three because that is absolutely a scribble and some some mock writing going on here and then here we have um he observed the fish i usually do fishes every year um the fish study every year um it says the fish swims all around <laughs> okay and then i'll do blocks in a minute but here he is, so for pretend, we um, we research preschool style, um, an animal, which basically they look through the pictures of their animal they pick, and then they make a habitat with a group or um, with some friends, like three friends usually make a habitat each. And then they, but before they make their habitat, they have to draw what their habitat is. So his habitat, it looks like he has, it says he has a toucan, doesn't make sense, but that's okay. Because again, he's three. And then he said that um, his toucan habitat has trees. So he drew his trees. So again, that's him very, on a very basic level, understanding what um, is in a rainforest. And he did another one. He has this, his giraffe. And then giraffes eat tall trees. So he made tall, tall trees for his giraffe. Okay. Other things that you can put in there are if you do any like life cycle um, cut and paste worksheets, those you can put in there. You can also put in there, this is one that flew out, 
and I borrowed the page protector to show you guys the letter book. If they do any kind of um, like headbands, this is like a space headband they made. Um, you can put those in there too, or any time you guys go on nature walks, put those in there. And then I also put all of the blocks and stem in the in the um, science section. And what I like to do is, as you can see it, I take a picture of what they bu they built. So you can kind of see what it is. Now this is a pre-K friend, so it looks really similar, right? But here is another one he did when he was three. He drew a pumpkin patch. So this doesn't make a lot of sense, but once you have the photo, you can see he has all the blocks and he has his pumpkin. So he has all the blocks and then he has his pumpkins. So it makes much more sense because you have a photo. So take photos of any, obviously you have to catch them. <laughs> so a lot of times we do small STEM challenge builds for morning arrival time and then they draw a picture of it. And I just really quick go around and I take a picture of their, um, their building. If you can't remember who's is who, put the kid in the picture, it's fine. And then you have that. Here's another one. Again, I don't catch him all the time. He made, looks like a turkey, some kind of turkey building. And again, you don't have to have pictures every time, it's okay. And oh, here's his turkey picture. Apparently I printed a whole page big, look. There it is, got a little turkey. I just put a sticker on a piece of cardboard <laughs> because I didn't have any turkey figures. So there was his turkey hut. And he made a ramp. And there's the ramp he made. And then we also, oh, this is science. We did um, a quick one year. So, and pretend I either do zoo or aquarium. And this, for this um, science one, he made a habitat for turtles. So he said turtles need coral. That's his science paper for that. Oh, here's more science. We did, we had ants and caterpillars that year. Now, and I also take any pictures that I have of them building, I take those and I put those right in their journal. Here is like a, um, looks like a leprechaun trap. We got some more pictures in the block center. Okay, because, I don't want anything to fall. So, oh, here's another example too of, he, we, we did this for table time. I took a picture of him with his apple tree and then he drew it. In my block center, I have a book that has blueprints in it. So any blueprints they make, I take them, normally they're a whole bunch, and I put them in here. You can tell this one was in there. And then at the end of the year, I or um, like around conference time, I'll clean this out and put them in their portfolios or maybe take one out. And then I also have another binder that says, look what we built. And I have, I literally just take pictures. A lot of these I just have hanging up in the block center during the study. Like I'll have these out and then I have these hanging on the wall. Then I put them in our, our block center binder and then they go to the portfolio at the end of the year. So again, it's, I'm already putting these, I'm already printing these and having these in the classroom. So why not put them in their portfolio when, um, when you're kind of done with them, right? Now I also have a just for fun section. So I do do like first day of school, grandparents, grandparents day, like our fall parties, um, Thanksgiving. So all the different, maybe his gingerbread house, any of those fun classroom things that you do, winter party, Valentine's day, day party, muffins with mom. Ooh. And then they have them do their handprint. So all that fun stuff I put in here. I also some years do, like if you do any kind of like photo collages, again, I just print out a whole bunch of the photos, um, nine to a page, and then I glue them in there. And I just do a couple pages for each kiddo. He loved yellow, so I made his background yellow. And then I also put in like some of their things that we had their name on in the classroom and then since he was my kiddo, I put his graduation diploma in there too. The last section I have is art. So I put a lot of this in here. Now, a lot of the art projects that you can't fit like this, especially like the cutting snakes or anything that's like a headband, put all that in like a page protector. 
That way you can put it in your portfolio. And again, I just, here's another finger painting we did. I put it in there. If you don't want to hole punch something, you can put it in a page protector. And then just some drawings we did, some droppers. We did um, a tooth. And then if something's really big, what I do is I hole punch one side and then I kind of fold it over. Here's a tree, Here's another one. Again, I just take a lot of the art projects we do. Here was like a name collage we did. Some finger painting maybe, maybe painting with feathers, I can't tell. Mm -hmm. Some of his stuff is taken out because I use it for Facebook Lives. Here's some blowing paintings, we made crowns. Um, we did some craftivity, so we made a shark, a starfish, oh, and we're falling out. We have a turtle. I must have used these for a Facebook Live, otherwise they would be in here. So, all right, so again, all this would be in there, but I must have pulled it out for a Facebook Live. But normally, it's all in there in like page protectors. If you do something with like puffy paint, or like the DIY puffy paint, just put it in a page protector and it'll be fine. Um, or chalk, um, cup, um, spray hairspray on it and you can put it in a page protector, then it won't kind of bleed all over the place. So, and then one last thing. So I know um, a lot of you do amazing dramatic play themes. So take the writing pieces that you keep or you have in, from pretend take them and put those in their portfolios. Cause again, they're already doing it during play. So why not keep it and put it in um, their portfolio? So like I have, these are just some that I use um, for when I do professional development um, and show people different things. Um, so we have maybe, maybe a shopping list or a snack order they did cause that shows that they're reading the pictures, right? We have an inventory list. We have some mechanic reports. This was a postcard from when we did post office dramatic play. Here's an inventory list from when we did grocery store. Um, when we did um, uh, my um, space dramatic play, my space station, they can draw what they observe. Obviously it's pretend, but it's really cool. And they may, they also, in, in my space dramatic play unit, they build rovers or different space things so they can make blueprints for those. And again, I'm just gonna keep them because it's something they're already doing during play. And a lot of this, I don't ask them, it's not like I don't prompt them to do it. So it's literally done independently um, unless they ask me for help. So take all of this. Like if you see somebody, if you see like four kids do some shopping lists, instead of um, sending it home, put it in the to be documents file, put it in, um, just take it and put it in the to be documented file, or once you document it, put it in the to be filed, and then you'll have even more um, portfolio samples because again, they're already doing it during play, so take all those things that you're already doing and put it in there. Um, I think I have notes, let me double check. Yeah, so basically, keep doing all the awesome things you're doing. Try and add in stamps and add in like paper shapes and things like that to make it more hands-on. Add, if you're observing but your, your butterflies for small group, have them draw a picture, which is a great part of the science lesson anyways, and put it on the bulletin board and instead of sending it home, put it in their portfolios. Um, and I know some of you are wondering, like, do you send anything home during the year? I do not send a lot of stuff home throughout the year because it all goes in their portfolio. Unless it's very holiday themed and maybe like the family would want it to hang up at home for the holidays. Um, other than that, almost all of their like small group art, um, a lot of their science journals, um, and things like that, I keep and I send home at the end of the year in this. Because when families see this during fall, because I use I show this during fall parent-teacher conferences, which is, this is also a great tool for parent-teacher conferences. You can literally like flip through it 
and go, here's where they are here, here's what we're doing, here's what, how they're, here's where they're at on various skills. Because again, you have rubrics and photos to show their developmental level on everything in their, in their portfolio. Um, so you can use these. This is a great tool for parent teacher conferences. But are they sad a little bit that they don't get stuff during the year? Yes. Now, if a family wants to take home something or a kiddo wants to take home something, they absolutely can. But at the end of the year, families will be so happy to get this because this is all organized, right? It's all of the good stuff in one pile, right? You, they don't have to go through like a big stack this big of all the random things that have come home all year. So are they, do they, you know, kind of be concerned a little bit, I guess, at the beginning of the year when they don't see anything come home? Yes. And then if they do say like, oh, you know, I, we don't get anything coming home except, you know, the art stuff they do independently or whatever, like random projects. Um, I just say, you know what? I keep it and I, I'm going to put it, make a big portfolio for you. And I show them part of it, or maybe I show them, um, kind of like I'll pull out their file and be like, here's all the stuff she's done so far. Um, and I, I'm going to get, keep it organized for you. So you can have like one big giant pile of amazingness that your child did at the end of the year. And they will be so, so thankful <laughs> that it's organized all in one place. Um, yeah, they'll be, they'll be very happy. And then if they want to take stuff out of here and, um, hang it up for different holidays or hang it up in, in their house, it's totally, they can totally do that. But that's why too, a lot of times I don't hole punch a lot of things and I put things in page protectors. So that way, if they do want to hang it up, it doesn't have holes all over it. And I always try and write their name on the back of everything. So that way, if they want to hang it up at their house, they don't have my handwriting on, on it. They have their child's handwriting on it because I get, I know, they know I know how to write their name, right? Or their child's name. They don't need my work displayed in their house. So I always try and write um, anything or any notes on the back. Um, and then also too, one more, a couple more things. If you do fine motor journals, whether they're in a composition book or um, regular book, you can put them literally in this front pocket and send that whole thing home with them at the end of the year. Um, and then also, I know a lot of you guys do um, class books. So that last week of school, um, I literally take all, like this is a all about my family one that families can do. Um, we do during a family unit. This is a letters in our name. This is in my nocturnal animals unit. I take all of, this is I like to eat. We do um, how many candles on the cake. We do for birthday party. This is just an ABC book. I literally, um, I didn't write the kids' names on the back, but you could, and then you could take this and put that in there. But all of these, all the other class books have their names on them. So literally you can take all of these and put them in their book. I'd probably put this in fun stuff. This would go in literacy, literacy, and this would go in math. So you can take all of that and put that in there, in their, um, in their, in their portfolio as well. So I hope you loved this video all about student portfolios. And again, if you want to watch the one, the video on assessments, I will put the link here. Um, so you can go watch that. And then part three in our assessment and student portfolio video will be all about the data binder, how to use it, all the things. I'll go more in depth in that in um, the next video. So. I hope you guys have an awesome night and I hope you guys are, are less stressed doing portfolios in your classroom and can implement something that you think will help you. Obviously, I know you don't love everything I do, but hopefully I gave you guys some tools and tricks that you can use to make your, um, your teaching life easier. So you guys have an amazing day or night and I will talk to you soon. Bye.